Hello, everyone, and welcome to our Essential Tremor Virtual Education Forum. Today, we're speaking with Cadent Therapeutics about their clinical trial for a potential ET medication. My name is Patrick McCartney. I'm the Executive Director of the International Essential Tremor Foundation. And before we get started, I'd like to say a quick thank you to our corporate partners, Medtronic, Abbott, Insitec, Sage Therapeutics and Cala Health. Their support allows us to provide these webinars, our podcast series, and hopefully sometime in the near future, our quarterly ET education forums when we can all get together in person. So I would like to introduce our speaker today is Tim Pizer. Tim is the Chief Scientific Officer at Cadent Therapeutics. Tim, welcome and thank you for joining us. Thank you, Patrick. It's a pleasure to be here. Happy to tell people about what we're doing over at Cadent to help folks with essential tremor. So we'll let you go ahead and share your screen and kind of walk us through the, your presentation. Great. Okay. So um, I'm going to tell you today about the development of CAD 1883. This is a compound that uh, Caden is developing for movement disorders in which we have tested clinically in folks with uh, essential tremor. Caden is a privately funded pharmaceutical company developing a diverse portfolio of products for the treatment of uh, neurological disorders and psychiatric disorders. And all of our compounds actually target uh, a particular type of um, protein called an ion channel and the ion channels uh, have a critical role in generating the normal um, oscillatory dynamics of the brain's electrical activity. And so we think of ourselves as regularizing that activity when it becomes uh, dysregulated in disease, um, regularizing the rhythms of the brain, if you will. Uh, we take a particular approach to our studies, and you'll see this played out as I tell you about the work that we're doing. Uh, we try to use objective measures of clinical symptoms. Uh, we try to use uh, central reviewers to really make sure that when we're making assessments uh, medically, uh, that we do so in a consistent way. Uh, we try to enrich and stratify for patients uh, that respond uh, that may respond differently to treatment based on their clinical presentation. And then we run a flexible clinical protocols to help us learn about the compound at, during its development. Just to walk you through our portfolio of products briefly before we get into the, um, the uh, CAD 1883 story, um, you can see that we have a number of clinical milestones that we're currently working on. In schizophrenia, we're developing an NMDA receptor positive allosteric modulator. That's not CAD 9303. This is for the treatment of schizophrenia. We currently have a study going on, uh, actually a phase one study in patients with schizophrenia, uh, which will lead out um, next year. We have partnered a program an NMDA receptor negative allosteric modulator with Novartis, and they are testing the compound uh, in treatment resistant depression. And again, uh, have phase two studies underway, uh, which uh, we're excited to hear the results of hopefully sometime soon. And then what we're gonna talk to today is about 1883. That's at the bottom of this slide. This is a um, a, mod, a modulator, positive allosteric modulator of, an, of the SK channel, and I'll tell you about more about the SK channel. What you see on this slide is our current focus to test this compound in a different movement disorder called spinocerebellar ataxia. Um, but on the far right there at the bottom, you can see that we actually have already completed a clinical study in essential tremor, which was positive, um, a positive proof of concept, as we call it. Uh, and so we're positioned uh, potentially for further development of this drug for the treatment of essential tremor, uh, and then hopefully also spinal cerebral ataxia in the future. So I'm gonna focus for the rest of the time on the work we've done with 1883 in spinal cerebral ataxia. I'll begin by just telling you what the compound does. And uh, in particular, I wanna define the term SK. <laughs> 
SK is the name of the ion channel that we're targeting, and that's a small conductance calcium activated potassium channel. I'll tell you more about what it does in a moment. And 1883 binds to that channel and sort of brightens its activity. It increases the activity of that channel. The reason that's important is really summarized on this slide. SK channels are really critical in controlling the timing of spikes in the nervous system. Uh, neurons fire little electrical signals, uh, and these little digital electrical signals called action potentials actually encode critical information in the nervous system and the timing of those action potentials with respect to one another is a critical component of that uh, information um, encoding. In particular, SK2 channels are critical in the Purkinje neurons of the cerebellum. These are big, actually quite beautiful neurons that are the major output of the cerebellar cortex. So the cerebellum, as you know, is a structure on the back of the brain that is critical uh, really as a computational module for the timing of lots of activity. And in particular, in fine motor control, the cerebellar cortex receives a copy of the motor command and gets a lot of sensory information, especially about the positions of the limbs and the movement of the body, and then computes an error term between the intended move and the actual move, the intended movement and the actual movement. And that error term, that uh, input to movement control is critically dependent on spike timing in the Purkinje cells. And we know that that spike timing is disrupted, both in essential tremor and in spinal cerebellar ataxia, but in different ways in the two diseases. And so this um, dysregulated firing of Purkinje cells is critical in the generation of the invol involuntary oscillatory movements uh, that folks with essential tremor experience. We think by normalizing the firing of Purkinje cells with 1883, uh, we can relieve uh, tremor and also um, reduce the ataxic, the incoordinated movement that's present in patients with spinal cerebellar ataxia. This is a, just a pictorial overview of our hypothesis for the mechanism of action of 1883 that would make it uh, a medicine a ther with therapeutic benefit for patients with essential tremor and patients with spinal cerebellar ataxia. On the far left, you see a cartoon of the ion channel. So this is sort of a little a set of helices that cross the membrane. They can open and close, and they allow potassium to pass through the membrane, and that changes the electrical activity of neurons. And it's triggered by calcium. Um, 1883 binds to that channel. It doesn't activate the channel itself. What it does is make the channel more sensitive to calcium. Uh, so that's the far left. That's the molecular pharmacology of the action of 1883 as a positive allosteric modulator of this ion channel. In the panel to the um, second to the right, to the left, cellular physiology, what you're seeing there are the action potentials, the little spikes we talked about that encode information in the nervous system. And after each of these spikes, calcium channels open and the calcium that enters the cell stimulates or gates the SK channel. And that gating determines that lower loop that goes down below the dotted line, quieting the cell for a moment before the firing of the next spike. The duration of that is determined by the SK channel. And when we add 1883, you increase the amount of SK channel current. You actually uh, lengthen and, and deepen that um, after hyperpolarization, as we call it. So that's the change in neuronal firing. In the brain network pathophysiology panel, what you see is in the Purkinje cells of the cerebellum, in essential tremor, and in spinal cerebral ataxia, there's a dysregulated firing. And the SK channels in those Purkinje cells uh, can be targeted to normalize that firing uh, and then normalize the output of the cerebellum to reduce tremor. In fact, folks may be familiar with one um, treatment, uh, which is a deep brain stimulation of uh, structures in the thalamus which are the output point of the cerebellum, again, targeting the normalization of the cerebellar output in, um, in essential tremor. And, and we think of this in some ways as a pharmacological, um, as pharma pharmacological replacement for that deep brain stimulation. And then finally, on the far right, you have the clinical endpoint. You have the 
involuntary oscillatory movement, the generator of which is that dysregulated activity in the central tremor, uh, or the incoordinated movement associated with, associated with spinal cerebral ataxia. And these are the clinical endpoints that we would measure to actually um, test our hypothesis uh, in patients. So that's a little bit of a pictorial overview of the, of the, of the compound mechanism of action. A little bit about the time and work it takes to actually bring a new therapeutic forward. This is a, a little bit of the history of Caden and of 1883, and it really begins with another company, a company called Neurosearch, which is a Danish company that was established to develop treatments for Huntington's disease and for Parkinson's disease, and really had a lot of expertise in the study of ion channels. And back in 2005, they, they discovered the first compounds in the chemical series uh, that we are, that 1883 comes from. And these were the first SK channel positive allosteric modulators uh, discovered um, back in 2005, 2006. They then conducted an expansive uh, optimization of that chemical series, made 600 different compounds, and really found their first, what they thought was a clinical candidate, at NS13001. At that time, a uh, venture capital firm um, in Boston, Atlas Ventures, became interested in this program and in the potential that we, that we could treat spinal cerebellar ataxia and essential tremor and movement disorders like that with this mechanism. And so they purchased a license to that series um, uh, and awarded the company uh, what was named Ataxion at the time, with a Series A funding to continue that optimization of these compounds. At Ataxion, we then did another series of medicinal chemistry optimizations, yielding what we thought was a new and improved clinical candidate, a compound called uh, Ataxion 1289, ATXN 1289. We ran into some difficulties in development of that compound uh, and, and developed yet another improved compound, which we called 1551. Ran into some difficulties with the development of that compound, did another round of medicinal chemistry, and finally arrived at 1883. And a major part of that was really getting around some um, off target. Uh, safety findings that we had with the compounds from the earlier uh, earlier compounds from this series. So 1883 lacked that concern. We get, were ending. We were able to run two week uh, pivotal toxicology studies in animals um, in two species, and that supported uh, finally um, not only submission of the IND to the FDA to allow us to move into phase one studies, and then eventually into phase two studies in essential tremor, but also we were able to gain now additional funding for those studies through an award of a series B round. And at that time we renamed the company Cadent, actually merging with another company focused on the NMDA receptors to form Cadent. So we did then the two week study in essential tremor um, that I'm gonna tell you about in a moment. But in the meantime, we've also run 12 week non-clinical toxicology studies, and these will allow us to run longer-term studies. Of course, essential tremor is a chronic condition, and so a two-week uh, treatment period, while it can give us an early indicator of efficacy, is insufficient duration of a, of a trial, ultimately. So we'll have to come back and run longer-term trials, and these are now enabled with longer-term non-clinical studies. And then, as I've mentioned, we have a focus also on testing this compound in spinal cerebral ataxia and, and a new IND granted to do that work as well. Uh, so this is where we are now with a proof of concept in essential tremor that I'm about to show you and then positioned to also test the compound in spinal cerebral ataxia enabled by these longer term toxicology studies. So you can see it takes a long time uh, to develop a new treatment and we're really excited to finally be in the position that we are in uh, with 1883. So on the next slide, uh, this is really a summary of this um, proof of concept study that we conducted in essential tremor. And we felt we could do this with confidence because treatments of essential tremor, the only approved treatments for Pranolol, um, can do show reductions in tremor within a couple of weeks. So even though this is a short duration study, it could give us a leading indicator of whether or not the drug was going to be uh, useful as a treatment. And we baked into this design 
a couple of approaches that we think are really important in movement disorders in general and in our development programs going forward. So this was the Cadence 1 study. It is a completed study. It was an open label study. So we just compared patients to their own baseline tremor to see if the drug improved and not to a placebo. Obviously, running placebo-controlled studies would be critical going forward. And it was primarily a safety study. This was the first time we'd been in patients. To this point, we had only been in healthy volunteers in a phase one study. But we were also wanting to confirm that we had an active dose. Our phase one work suggested dose, but we needed to study it in a therapeutically relevant setting to confirm that. So the first thing we did when is uh, um, recruit patients, ask patients with the essential tremor to join us and test this compound. And we asked them to wash out of their current treatments if they were on them, uh, which is certainly a challenge that we really appreciate patients being willing to do to test a, a new potential treatment. We also videotaped the performance of the Tetris. That's the um, essential tremor rating and assessment scale. It's a neurological scale. Neurologists uh, who are movement disorder specialists will watch the patients um, uh, assume a certain set of postures and movements and then evaluate the severity of the tremor. And we can add up the scores that the neurologists assigned to get an idea of the severity of the tremor. And of course, we also had to confirm that we were actually studying essential tremor. Uh, as you know, uh, tremor appears in many disorders. And we want to make sure that we were really uh, selecting the right patients for this study. So we confirmed that eligibility with experts who are not um, the principal investigators of the study, but could help us really to ensure study quality. And we did that really throughout the study. The videotape central reviews means at the baseline, uh, first of all, at the screening for eligibility at the baseline, again, at day seven and day 14. And at follow-up, we collected these videos and then we randomized them and had um, external physicians who are not the principal investigators at the sites rate the tremor. And this allows us to control for potential placebo response, even in this open label setting. We gave a 300 milligram dose twice daily. Uh, we think with the pharmacokinetics of 1883, we can eventually develop a uh, once daily dosing, but for now we really wanted to maintain good steady state drug levels throughout the day. And we varied the interval of that to change the exposure levels to see whether we could deepen the response with more exposure. We had 18 subjects in the first cohort and then seven subjects in the second cohort, and they came in for visits at screening at baseline, and as, as, as I said, at day one, seven, 14, and 21, 21 being the follow-up, so it's two weeks of treatment. We used the Tetris performance scale uh, as the primary readout of efficacy, uh, and I'll walk you through the results in a moment. But we also used a, an objective biomarker. This is an acceler accelerometer and gyroscope device that's worn as a ring on the finger. You can see it there in the picture. It actually directly detects the movement of the hand associated with upper limb tremor, with a hand tremor in, in, the, in patients with essential tremor. And so we could confirm any observations we had on the rating scale by using this direct physical measure of the tremor. Uh, the next slide shows you some of our results. Uh, you can see this is just a still picture uh, because it's a video presentation, but you look at one of the postures there uh, that the patient is assuming during the Tetris uh, pre-dose in day 14. That subject is the subject from whom the data below it is taken. Uh, you can see he had a performance scale score of about 26 at baseline. That was about the mean for the study, and that was reduced at 10 points at the 14-day follow-up. So that's a really meaningful reduction in overall tremor. You can see that the spiral he drew during the Tetris test contained a lot of oscillatory hand movements at baseline, and these are nearly gone at the 14-day treatment. That's a really pronounced effect. And that the measurement with the Kinesia 1 device, that's the accelerometer on the finger, went from 13 down to about a seven, so a substantial reduction also in that objective measure. So this subject, and this is the subject who responded best in the study on the far right of the, of the graph, um, um, uh, really had a, a tremendous treatment response, uh, suggesting that there's therapeutic benefit. Uh, you can see all of the subjects in the study displayed in that graph by their change in, in the tremor based on the Tetris from baseline to day 14. 
And you can see that the group of subjects on the far right really had a pronounced response. 41% of the subjects had a reduction of more than five points on the Tetris, which the experts tell us uh, is potentially a clinically meaningful response. And some folks had a much bigger response than that. And you see the two cohorts. When we in shortened the dosing interval to increase the exposure, we got a little bit better of a treatment response. And those few subjects that completed that portion of it suggesting a dose response, and we will need to do more dose ranging going forward, but really encouraging uh, that we have some room to work with. So we're very excited about this effect. Uh, it seems to suggest that we can engage the SK channel in the cerebellum of these patients uh, and, uh, and yield therapeutic benefit uh, by reducing tremor by a, a couple of different measures. So that's the data we have from the proof of concept study. We presented this data um, at the Movement Disorder Society um, meeting in February of this year. And, uh, and now looking forward, um, we have a map for the road ahead. Uh, as I said, one of our next steps will certainly be to test this same compound in patients with spinal cerebellar ataxia, which is also a movement disorder, a genetic disorder of cerebellar dysfunction that leads to uncoordinated movement, so different than the tremor presentation in folks with essential tremor. We will, of course, need to expand both the safety and the efficacy studies for further development in, in either disorder. That means longer-term studies, that means double-blind placebo-controlled studies, dose ranging, just to get to the, to the stage of starting registration studies. So it will be some time before we develop this medicine, uh, have it available for, for patients, but we're really excited to be on the way down that path. And of course, we will want to continue to collaborate with you, the folks who actually live with essential tremor day to day, um, whom we hope to serve in the future uh, to continue to test 1883. So thanks to those who participated in, uh, and we hope that uh, we'll see others of you again in the future. So that's the story I have to tell about 1883. I really thank you for taking your interest and and your time and attention to, to listen to this uh, presentation. Thanks very much. Pam, thank you. Thank you very much for, for taking the time to talk with us today and share some great information on Cadence work on a potential new essential tremor treatment. I think everyone's really excited about that. And just so everyone knows, I'm sure as Caden moves forward with this, you will, any updates that they have, they'll share with us and we will share with you guys, including recruitment uh, possibilities and opportunities for any trial as they move forward. So if you have any questions regarding essential tremor or other topics, please feel free to visit the IETF website at essentialtremor.org or you can call us toll free at 888-387-3667. And finally, if you are a donor to the IETF, we, we thank you for your support. If you aren't currently a donor, please consider a gift uh, that'll help us continue to do the work we do for promoting ET awareness, education, support, and research. And we're going to be hosting a variety of these virtual ET education events in the upcoming months, uh, including some podcasts and these virtual ET education webinars. So look for notices about these events in your email, on our social media, in our Tremorgram uh, e-newsletter, e and our Tremor Talk magazine. So thank you again for joining us today, Tim. And thank you all for, for listening, and we hope you have a great day. Thank you. Thank you, Patrick. Thank Take you, care, Tim. folks. Take care.